There we are. So, hello everyone. Uh, as you heard, I am Kyle, and I'm going to be talking about civic coding in Ruby. So, as uh, you're in, uh, as you go to a convention, do the talks ever kind of uh, blur together, and you kind of stare off into space, and you wonder why are we all here? What am I doing here? Um, so I haven't had the chance to meet all of you, but I think that I know at least two things about all of you and, and why you're all here. Um, one of them is I think that you all like to be happy. And another one is I suspect that most or all of you like to take care of, uh, to work on things that are meaningful rather than uh, menial tasks or, or tasks that are um, tedious. And why I say this is because uh, as Rubyists, Ru Ruby is meant to make us all happy. And if, if you happen to be using Rails, um, Rails is a convention over um, configuration, so it's set up to make us uh, able to work on meaningful and important tasks. So I think you like to all be happy and work on things that, that matter. And just to, to confirm that I, in fact, know these things about you, what would you do if you come across these two nice folks along the side of the road and their car is broken down? So someone shout out an answer. What would you do if you, if you see this scene? Continue driving on or stop to help them? Help them, I'm hearing, help them. So, you come across this foreigner outside the, the magic and he doesn't know where to go, what would you do? Help him and, and here's my cat, uh, requisite cat photo for my slides. Uh, what would you do if you see this sweet cat up the tree and you have, take a picture and the next step is? <laughs> so why in all these cases would you help the the person or animal in need because I actually research shows that helping people or helping animals I guess uh, makes people happy and we all like to be happy. So what if I were to tell you that there's another group of people who actually needs your help and you're the perfect group of people to help them uh, but this group may not be as obvious to see as the ones I just uh, shared with you. So in fact, the group of people is your fellow citizens, and the way that you can help them is through something called civic hacking. And when I say civic hacking, what is in your mind? Are you thinking that I, I hack into the Pentagon and, and launch some missiles? Is that civic hacking? That's not the civic hacking that I have in mind. Um, is it that when you use a horrible government website and you're trying to accomplish the basic task that, that you have at hand, is that what I mean by civic hacking? That may be a form of civic hacking, but that's not what I have in mind. Uh, all that I'm talking about is just using technology and, and new technological tools to help make government better for people. Um, so it sounds kind of simple and at the same time it's an abstract kind of airy-fairy concept. So I'm going to give you a very concrete example that I think will help you understand what civic hacking is all about. So this nice little Ruby app uh, helps cities in the U.S. make a really nice profile of the public services that they offer and then put it in a database easily and serve it via, via an API. So clients have been made for this that allow people to do something like um, use SMS to get a directory of the services that are available for them in their cities. So this uses technology to improve um, government for people in, the, in various cities, and so it's an example of civic hacking. So you may be thinking that's all well and good. That's happening in the US. How does that impact me? So um, I have, I think, 15 minutes, so I'll give you a deal that if you give me seven of those minutes, I think I can prove to you that civic hacking is actually all about exactly you. So starting now. Um, do you like living on dry land and having water to drink? Yes, and, and not even just water, like uh, Coca-Cola, coffee, beer, anything that's made with water. Um, so. The Paris Climate Accords is basically humanity's biggest effort to combat drought and uh, flooding and all those scourges of, of global warming. And the CO target, the CO2 targets that are a basis for the agreement are based on computer models, which in turn are based on work done by uh, folks who are, by definition, civic hackers. Now, do you like being healthy and not paying bribes? I suspect so. so uh, civic hacking, uh, according to researchers across 19 countries, has all these really tangible benefits. Benefits of better economics, better um, governance, better uh, public health outcomes. So, two really quick examples. In the country of Slovakia, they made a really simple app to list out uh, 
public contracts and who got those public contracts. And that helped to reduce corruption quite a bit. And then closer to home in Singapore, there was a simple app to map out the um, mosquito uh, dengue fever outbreaks and it improved public health. So do you like computers and do you like Ruby? Yes, we all like those things. So uh, then I would suggest that the values of civic hacking probably align really well with your own values. So on the Ruby side, uh, Rubyists, if you can say one thing about us, it's that we're nice and civic hacking is a nice thing to do. Uh, the Art of Computer Programming, uh, a really foundational book in, in computer science. So the author has pointed out that once you have enough uh, stuff for yourself, the basics in your life, the, the most significant and, and important thing that you can do as a person is to help other people. And civic hacking is an example of that. And the last part, now I, I know we heard earlier this morning about the word diversity. Um, I'm using diversity in this um, sense uh, from the language from the survey in Stack o Overflow. So whatever it means to you, um, most developers value diversity and civic hacking is oftentimes uh, an effort to improve diversity in communities. Finally, do you like things that are not horrible? Um, so you, if you do like those things, you may want to cover your eyes or avert your gaze because um, this may disturb you. Um, some of these websites need a lot of work. They're optimized for like uh, Internet Explorer or maybe Netscape Navigator or something. And this next one is not so bad. It can show me the nonprofit organizations that are going on in Malaysia, which is a really good concept. But the problem is I cannot search in terms of the services that I want to get. I have to imagine what would be the name of a organization that might be providing that service, and then only I can search. So. Um, uh, when, not surprisingly, when the UN looks at uh, e-government services across countries, Malaysia is not highly ranked. And what I'm trying to demonstrate is there's a lot of opportunity for us to improve this situation. So if you don't care about those things, you can um, tune out. But if you do, I'm going to talk about the two paths to get involved. And to illustrate that, the difference between the two paths, consider the case of DuckTales. Suppose there's a DuckTales gem. And in that gem, I got an error, um, list ducks error, or no, invalid duck error, when I'm trying to list out the characters in DuckTales. Now, what would you do in this case? Read the documentation for the gem or check Stack Overflow. So uh, my point is that there are two different um, options. One is an insider's option. One is an outsider's option. Both, I would argue, are valid. And suppose that you look in the mirror one morning and you see this. Um, kind of gruesome visage looking back at you, what would you do? Visit a proper clinic or search WebMD. So I'm hearing both cases. Um, insiders one and outsiders one is, is both are equally valid. And so to consider why, and it's also the case in civic hacking, insiders and outsiders are, are both um, doing good work. So quickly, the case of why insiders in civic hacking? Why, why is it the case that I cannot um, eat durians in many public places? Am I fouling up the error only for myself or for everyone? It, it, it's really a, it's everyone's error, right? Error is one of those public goods that everyone enjoys. And conversely, if I want to buy an air purifier and improve the air for everyone, I, as, I as an individual don't have the proper incentives to do that. So with, uh, with these public goods, there's often this free rider problem. And information is often one of these cases. And civic hacking is often one of these cases. So, uh, this fellow, who um, Steve Crocker, who worked on the ARPANET, which is one of the kind of forerunners to what became the internet, described this very problem and why uh, public, public uh, folks are often need to get involved, government people. So just quickly, uh, there were all these proprietary little networks that had to be put together with a common infrastructure and common protocol. And if a private company were the one to do that, then the private company would control the whole network and that would be undesirable. So a, a public entity had to, a neutral public entity, namely the government, had to be the one to step in and uh, provide that. And information is often one of these public goods. So a really nice example of uh, insiders who did good work in civic hacking is this app, Balance. And uh, so when folks are receiving financial assistance in the US, um, they can use this app to check their monthly balance of what they have available to them. And check out this nice Ruby code, how easy it is to understand. 
and imagine how easy it would be to customize this from state to state. Another nice one is cute pets, which animal shelters can use uh, this Ruby app to connect their animals to permanent homes. So as for why outsiders are necessary for civic hacking, um, consider what does a Pokemon have in common with a Borg and a pull request? This is a head scratcher, I know. Any ideas? So uh, what I have in mind is that all of them need some outside stimulus or uh, kind of challenge in order to improve themselves. Like a Pokemon wouldn't evolve into his next stage uh, until he did battle with other Pokemon. A Borg has to assimilate other cultures in order to improve, and a pull request needs uh, comments in order to uh, get better. So often uh, government is the same way, and there's some research about this as well that I won't go into. So a good example of what good work that outsiders do in, in pub, uh, civic hacking is this app by the American Civil Liberties Union. And you can see some stats here about uh, police misconduct in the US. The problem that often happens is when someone is recording an incident, the phone gets confiscated or smashed or something. And so this app helps people get better government services by keeping people accountable and quickly uh, sending a video to a third party before a phone get, can get taken away. So this example of civic hacking is one wherein probably government is not the, the best party to solve the problem. Probably it should be an outsider. So just quickly, uh, another reason why uh, outsiders are necessary is because there's too little talent uh, among, uh, there's uh, too little IT talent in, in government. The US Department of Labor has some stats about this, but you probably can get a sense of this as you go through some, some government websites that there might be a bit of a lack of, of uh, resources. Finally, uh, there's not enough of an agile workflow among government um, IT folks the, to meet changing needs of, of the public. So a good example of outsiders who did civic hacking is the Google Civic Information API, which provides information about voting and um, past and current elections, uh, which helps folks um, basically get to the polls and have a better government uh, experience when they have to vote. So uh, when you would let Sonic sit around too much, if you recall, um, without taking any action, he probably would, would give you this look. And maybe you're thinking the same thing. How do I get involved? So there are three quick, uh, simple things you can do to get involved in civic hacking and make a difference. And the first one that I want to talk about is using Ruby. So Code for America is the biggest civic hacking organization in terms of number of people that I know of. And when I look at their GitHub, I see that Ruby is the number one backend language that, that's being used. And why would that be the case? So I think there are three things that make Ruby an ideal language for civic hacking. Um, one of them is it's accessible. So there are just too few civic hackers doing the jobs that we need. And uh, Ruby is a language that people can pick up when they have the, the passion to do the work and the subject matter knowledge, maybe. Uh, they can pick up Ruby easily and get involved. Uh, also, as a dynamic language, it lends itself well, I would argue, to the kind of workflow that, that civic hackers use. And uh, finally, the UN has looked at the kind of needs for government e-services and civic hacking. And uh, it's really kind of CRUD app oriented many times. And uh, a framework like Rails can let folks easily meet those needs. So um, there are kind of three levels on which I can use Ruby. and um, just uh, quickly, on, on the local level, there's an open data program put together by the Malaysia's government that provides data for folks who want to do civic hacking. They have some really good data sets. There's also the Shy Hack Night model. So Chicago has a very good civic hacking scene. And I, I've been to this hack nights, and uh, they're really well put together in Chicago. And the folks who did the, uh, who organized it, put together a really nice uh, kind of guide for folks who want to organize their own local civic hacking efforts. So you can look this up and apply it locally. On the national level, there is an annual hackathon that focuses on civic hacking and with cash prizes for teams. Also, the CNR project, which uh, does basically tries to improve government for everyone. They work on APIs, they have hack nights, uh, they work on apps. And finally, even on the international level, you can get involved. Uh, the UN puts together something. Uh, and on 2017, the, the topic was on climate change. 
So wh whether you want to get involved on the local level, the national level, or the international level, I would just invite you to think about you know, what makes you happy and remember what makes other people happy. And remember that you have the opportunity to really make a big difference. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kyle.